Real you, quick, real quick. I got breaking news. Uh oh. I got breaking news. Uh -oh. Hold on. I got the sounder. Boom. Oh. 95 7 oh. the game. Breaking news. <laughs> The Athletic. The Golden State Warriors have agreed to a deal acquiring Buddy Heald via sign and trade from the 76ers. Sources tell The Athletic new teammates Heald and Stephen Curry are leaders for most three pointers made over the last five NBA seasons, and now they will be teammates. Sham Sharani of The Athletic reporting that the Golden State Warriors have acquired Buddy Heald via sign and trade from the 76ers. We don't know the. Um, the other things going away potentially from the Warriors in this deal, but we do know that Buddy Heald is now a Golden State Warrior. Your thoughts, Sam Loveman? Wow. So uh, it's uh, what's the word now? It's not Splash Brothers. It's Splash Buddies now. Oh, is that that's it? A, that's there well you done. You've been thinking about uh, that though. You got a couple no, days. I, I stole that from okay. someone else. I can't <laughs> be honest and say that uh, I, I thought of that on my own. But you know, hey, if Spinoni, one of my uh, favorite takes I've ever cracked off on this station was uh, when you and I were doing it last winter. Oh. We're looking for a replacement for, you know, the Splash Brothers. Why not Trey Young? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not saying this is on the Trey Young level here, but this feels like kind of we got Trey Young at home. Um, but he, I mean, hey, we got a, a lot of three point shooting there. That's good. Uh, as far as what else he brings on top of that, uh, is this really he's going to be our, our number two? I'll be honest, I'm not super geared up for for Buddy Heald. I mean, I'm curious to see what goes back in return here. Um, but my initial reaction is like, all right, let's, you know, a guy who shoots a lot of threes, uh, didn't start a whole lot of games last year, 14 starts, la sorry, uh, 42 starts last year uh, for the, uh, the Pacers and Sixers, um, but averaged 12 points a game last year. This is a guy where three-point shooting is a big part of his game, so... It'll be interesting. I'm, I'm interested. So, so a couple more details from Sham Sharania, who again uh, is breaking the news that the Golden State Warriors have agreed to a deal acquiring Buddy Heald via sign and trade. The Warriors are sending a 2031 Dallas second round pick to Philadelphia to complete the sign and trade. So obviously they got that Dallas pick from when they did the Clay Thompson sign and trade. So they're sending one of those second rounders now to Philadelphia and they get Buddy Heald back. So as follows, you got Chris Paul, San Antonio, Clay gone. Thompson, gone to Dallas. Uh, Dario Saric, I don't think anyone's mentioned him. I think he's gone. Was that a one-year deal? I haven't yeah. heard. I, I can't. <laughs> no one said anything about, as for, for as much as the, the, the hubble about whether or not Clay is coming back or not, I haven't heard a <laughs> single what's going on with Dario. Um, but now we got D'Anthony Melton in. Kyle Anderson in. Buddy Hailed in. Larry Markinen potentially we shall see. We're still on the market and watch. But Buddy Heald is now a Golden State Warrior. How are we feeling about that, Warriors fans? How are we feeling about this offseason thus far? Do you like the moves being made? Are you indifferent? Is it going to be the cherry on top for Lowry Markkinen if he gets here? Or if this is it, which it might be. Like, this might be the team going forward. Is this enough for the Golden State Warriors for you and for Stephen Curry and Draymond Green to compete again in the postseason? 888-957-9570. Let's go out to Marvin in San Jose. He wants to join in the conversation. What's going on, Marvin? You're almost Spadoni and Lumen on 95.7 The Game. Hey, guys. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. I love the show today. A really good job at it. But um, I, don't, I just wanted to talk about... You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Certainly can, Marvin. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to talk about two different things. One, regarding the Clay situation, I just feel like it was the wrong year for... Uh, to even get an extension, so I feel like if it was any other year where we made the second round or maybe made, made the first round, I feel like we could have easily re-signed Clay. I feel like Joe Lacob was like, you know what, we can't do this again. I'm not going over the second apron just to see us not even make the playoffs. So yeah, but at the same time, I hope Clay does. Okay, I know this is projecting, but I hope Clay does retire as a Warrior after the Mavericks contract. But anyway, regarding the Lowry situation, I feel like the whole thing with the Warriors is. If they were going to let Clay depart, I feel like it's a very risky move. I just want to see your opinion on this. Uh, it's a very risky move for the Warriors to bet on trade, you know? Like, they, they started off with betting on a Paul George trade, which is, uh, in my opinion, really hard because why would a division rival give you Paul George? And the second one, even Laurie, right? The Jazz, he's a young player. For him, for us to even get him, I feel like it's a very big call. We could say, we could compare Kaminga and Laurie all we want, but I feel like Joe Lacob does not want to get any more regret because we all saw what happened to Caruso. The... Uh, Caruso got traded and then the team and then re instant regret, you know, he started becoming better. So I don't think the Warriors want that with Kaminga. And I just want to see what you guys think about how Joe Lacob kind of bet letting Clay depart for trades. I still don't, I still think we're a star away. You know, we have all these plug and play players. We have 
DeAnthony Melton, we could say he's a two-way guard. We have a three-point shooter and Buddy Heal, but we don't have that one bona fide guy with a second option right now. Well, like if I ask who's the second option on the Warriors, it's not Wiggins. Kaminga's not ready yet. Well, we do, we can list like four players, but it's not like I don't. In my opinion, Steve Kerr, I don't even think he has his like. He's a good coach, but I don't, if you if you give you know if you don't give him a second fight bona fide scorer, it's going to be hard for him to do stuff. You know, so I just want to see what you guys think about the Warriors just betting their off season on trades, and so far it hasn't gone their way. You know, with trades. Yeah, there you go. That's Marvin I mean, in San Jose. Is Buddy Heald that second option? Like that's that's my first thought. Is obviously. My, I, I see it as, and obviously we'll see because it's a sign and trade. So first off, Buddy Heald made uh, just a tick under twenty million last year uh, with the Pacers and Sixers. Be interested to see what the details of this contract are. Obviously, it's a sign and trade, which means the Warriors are going to have to send a player out in return. So um, I'm curious to see what that return is. If Kaminga is a part of that deal, I would not give up Kaminga oh, for yeah. for Buddy no, Heald. So that. I hope that's not the case. If that is, then. Uh, we might have to to cancel uh, Evan and Dumas' show that so that we can you know, yell and scream, or maybe well, we just get them in and, and we can I, yell bad together. I don't think um, there's a player, Sam. I think it's just the pick. That's what but I mean. They, I they got to get the the money to uh, to sync up, right? I'm not. Well, that's just what's being. We're getting into right NBA now. CBA rules, yeah. which you, you could be speaking Greek to me right now, and it would be hitting just the same. God, um, I love Greek food. We'll uh, we'll see. Well, yeah. <laughs> Shout now, out Jax. Now you just made me hungry. Shout out Jax. Uh, I guess you got to have American food though. Right. Well, hey, wait, we're the melting pot. We get to claim everything, that's baby. That's a the, beautiful. It's a beautiful part about America. The, the melting pot. There you go. There you go. Oh, look at us. I said that earlier. He needs to have a menu right. on the at the melt. The Melton special. That's the easiest, yeah. Thank you. Come on. Um, by the way, when we talk about drops, we got to get. We got to get that South Park buddy drop, right? I'm not your buddy. Hey, yeah. buddy. Um, but my initial reaction, assuming Kaminga is still on this team, which I'm going to be very, very confident that that's still the case, your starting lineup is probably Steph, Buddy, Wiggins, JK, and Draymond of some combination there, right? I know they don't want you know Draymond playing the five as much, but... That's probably a small lineup too. I'm just I'm just throwing out a thought of that lineup right off the bat here. But if that's your approximate starting five right now, I mean the the name recognition looks nice. The actual reality on the court though, um, I'm not I'm not sure. I like Anderson as the small ball five. I think that'd be very good because I don't think the Warriors want to keep using Draymond there. I think that's a no, lot of wear don't. and tear. I think that was why they got Quinton Post. Correct, Quinton Post, and we'll wait and see. There, he's a rookie. What do you expect from him? Like. I do think we we have to be careful a little bit just because we saw Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis be those guys early on. Like, don't expect that. That's, a, that's not the case if always. Quentin Post is not top three rookie of the year. Oh, he's a boy. That's just going to be tough, right? Um, God, I don't even know what the rookie of the year odds are. It's just it's a mixed bag of everything. Dalton Connect, Bronny James. Like, I don't, like, who knows? Oh, Alex, Alex Saar is the favorite. Alex Saar, yeah, exactly. And who, like, no one's seen this guy play. Like, come on. Like, no one knows. Like, if, if all this stuff. So, thank you, Carter, for if, uh, Carter Chickering behind the uh, the glass today. Doing a hell of a job, Carter. And coming in on his holiday. We appreciate that. And don't clap yourself. Relax. All right. And you check. <laughs> all right. Now I need to check. All right. You a now, bit. now we're all right. <laughs> so, no, I love you. Carter's doing a hell of a job. Back to jail. <laughs> because he is going to be solo dolo on the glass for this show and the next show. So, yeah, it's a grind. Thank you, exactly. Carter, for doing this. There. Because if he wasn't here, well, we'd have to be doing it ourselves. But well, that's okay. We do that all the time. And it was shout out the pregame <laughs> show Monday through Friday, five to six with yours truly. But today and tomorrow, You'll have Spadolian Loveman and Evan Giddings and Jason Dumas. They'll be reacting to this news as well here in about, oh, 40 minutes or so. So can't wait to hear their reaction. And uh, yours, 888-957-9570. These are the acquisitions thus, uh, thus far for the Warriors. You got DeAnthony Melton. You got Kyle Anderson, slow-mo, as I go slow with that delivery. And now you got Buddy Heald in a sign-and-trade. Is this enough right now to surround Stephen Curry? Is this enough for you, Warriors fans, with the departures of Chris Paul and Clay Thompson, you bring in these three guys. How are we feeling about it? 888-957-9570. As I look at the Xfinity Mobile text line, Dub stands new man. Buddy Heald, LFG. There you go. Someone's excited about it from the 650. And put your name on it, as Whitey Gleason like to say here. Put your name on it. I want to hear your names out there. From the 323, I don't know where that is. Curry and Heald, the new best shooting backcourt in the NBA. Okay. 510. As of right now, Sam Lumman, we are a seventh seed. That would make you a play in team. You're a seventh seed, brother. I mean, they have I this, need the Nick and San Jose I mean, analysis I on mean, this. The, yeah, 888 957. Nick and San Jose, where are you at, man? We yeah. are a 38 win team. Relax. Eight. You're better than that. If you get a full Draymond <laughs> Green, I listen, I like Buddy Heald. He has a lot of um 
How much is what is he like he as has a defender a, though? That's the other thing. He has a lot question. of Nick Young qualities to me. Mm. Where he can be a very streaky shooter. He can shoot you into a game, but he can shoot you out of one. And he is not Clay Thompson. We do not love you like that, buddy healed. So that streakiness, we might love it at times, we might hate it at times, but he will shoot that rock. But it's not Clay Thompson. So I'm looking at the guy now that Clay's gone. Who are the, who's going to be the punching bag, so to speak, for well, the Warriors fans? Clay, I mean, Buddy Heald's going to probably be the the shield, the Heald shield. That's a, <laughs> eh, eh, it's a three. It's, yeah, it's a two and a half. Um, I mean, yeah, he's not going to have any of the, the 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 past goodwill that Clay had, obviously. And if that goes off the rails fast, you're looking for a punching bag. I don't think that punching bag is going to be on the court, Spadoni. That punching bag is going to be in the executive office. There Mike you. Dunleavy, you're the next man up, I think, when it comes to scapegoat punching bag. Who's going to get thrown out into the into the cold? Um, this is something that we could probably talk about on the other side of this Absolutely. break. Absolutely, and what's coming up in the game is that, and it's brought to you by Fremont Bank. So- 